good morning. I'm in a Presbury and uh, today I'm going to climb Cleve Hill. Walking up Cleve Hill today. Uh, it's 370 meters, I believe. So not a particularly tall peak. And I'm probably at nearly 100 or so meters where I am now. So a moderate climb. But the interesting thing about Cleve Hill is it kind of has two summits. I mean, obviously there's one summit that's the actual summit. But the actual summit is on a little bit of a kind of flat, boring bit and you can't see much from there. So we're going to go there anyway, because you've got to get to the top of the hill, haven't you? But then we're going to go to the kind of other summit, which is actually the viewpoint. And that is where you get really wide ranging views all the way across the seven, uh, what do you call it, the Seven Valley floodplain and all that kind of area. Already a little bit sweaty because I cycled here. So a uh, good way to warm up for the walk, I suppose. Nice bit of cloud cover, so shouldn't be too hot. Looking for a little footpath on the left to cut up the hill. Uh, I was hoping it would be kind of quiet, but it isn't. <laughs> That's a lot of horses. Hello there. Hello. Hello. Can I come through here, please? Is that okay? Real nice horse. I definitely prefer horses to cows. Far more docile creatures. But I still get a bit nervous. They're very large animals, aren't they? And uh, the one that walked up to the gate was particularly large. Anyway, I'm in the field now. Haven't got attacked by horses, unsurprisingly, so here we are. We begin our ascent of Cleve Hill. As ever with public footpaths, this one is particularly well hidden. I think, I think we need to go through this gap here. Doesn't look very official. There's no footpath signs or anything. Hmm. Okay. This doesn't seem No, this can't be the footpath. It doesn't lead anywhere. <laughs> How am I lost already? Hmm. <laughs> okay. I've had to retrace my footsteps already. Don't think that's the path. I'm gonna try going further up this field because on the map it looks like it kind of exits the field further up, maybe. Uh, oh no. Oh yeah. So I think that's where we went before. I think that's where we actually needed to be. Looks like it's gonna be a bit misty for a, for a decent view of Cheltenham, but should still be all right. Oh yeah, this looks better. Looks more like a footpath. Oh, it's got steep very quickly. The thing about making videos about climbing up hills is that it can be quite uh, quite hard work. 
which makes it harder to talk to camera, of course. So, uh, may just need a few B-roll montages for this video to, uh, to fill the gaps a bit. <laughs> Oh, got too hot already. Need to remove a layer. This is all uh, kind of very well trodden by the horses. And so when there's a little bit of a kind of stream coming off the hill, it gets really muddy. And you can see where all the horse hooves have sunk into the stream, which at least makes it obvious where the streams are but uh, makes it very difficult to cross, cross them at all. So the summit, or the, you know, the kind of actual highest summit, is just to the right of those three transmitters or masts or whatever you call them. So getting a bit closer, but still quite a way to go. Nice view down to the race course where I was a few weeks ago. Still a bit misty, but uh, I'm hoping the sun will come out in the next hour or so, burn off some of this mist, and then when I get to the viewpoint, there should be hopefully an amazing view, but you never know, do you? We'll just have to see. I think I need to get to the top corner of this field next. I hadn't noticed, but there's actually a cow in this field, or maybe two cows, or maybe more. But actually, there's kind of two fields and then a little gap. So uh, I don't think I'm in too much danger, but I'm just gonna head for the corner and not disturb the cows. This bit's very steep. Ah, oh, it's like a 45 degree angle upwards. Once again, on these weekend walks, I find myself within an hour of home, walking somewhere totally unfamiliar, which is brilliant, you know? Should be more of this kind of thing. We feel the need to travel far and wide in our cars, polluting the earth, when right on our footsteps are these amazing places that I just have never explored, you know? I have to say so far, well done to the farmer here because these public footpaths are really well maintained, which is exactly what you want when you're on a public walk. You don't want to be trying to shimmy over broken bridges or through stinging nettles or whatever, so. Bravo to whatever this farm is called. Right, we've got some real altitude now and uh, we're still going up, but I can't now see the kind of peak above me. So I think I must be getting fairly close. I'm at 240 metres currently above sea level and the, uh, the summit is at 330 metres above sea level. So uh, another 90 metres up still to go.
thought we were nearly at the top, but I think it's a bit of a false peak. I think 90 meters is actually still quite a long ascent, isn't it? Definitely feels like it's levelling out a bit, so I think the kind of real uphill bit of the ascent's now over. Now it's more of a gradual ascent over to the summit, and then we can move on to the um, to the viewpoint, the kind of other summit, as it were. Did you know that Cleve Hill is actually the highest point in the River Thames drainage basin? So the water that falls here on Cleve Hill can end up flowing through London way downstream. Oh my god, <laughs> that cow just came bounding up to me. Straight for me. My heart was racing. Oh my goodness, I was not expecting that. Didn't even see him in the trees over there. His friends are all over there. Oh my goodness. Just seen a sign for the Sabrina Way. Not sure what the Sabrina Way is, but I think I might have just been walking on it. <laughs> Something to look up later. So I've just hit a road which runs almost to the top of Cleve Hill. So if you want to cheat and just drive to almost the summit and then take a two or three minute walk to the summit, this is the way you do it. So I think there's a little car park just up here by the big uh, masts and then I think the summit's just over there somewhere so we're going to have a look for it. These three masts that sit on top of Cleve Hill can be seen from a lot of Cheltenham so it's kind of a uh, symbolic viewpoint I suppose in a way at least in the fact that you know, we can see it. That is, for most of Cheltenham, that is Cleve Hill. You know, you see the mast and you go, oh yeah, there's Cleve Hill. Right. I've made it to the iconic masts on top of Cleve Hill. And I mean, they're kind of iconic, beautiful, Perhaps not quite the right word, but they're nice. I like them. Right, well, we're on the we're on the final push for the summit. I mean, it's not exactly like when you climb Everest and you have to, you know, do a final push up the knife ridge or whatever. No, you just got to walk across a common full of sheep. Slightly less dramatic, but nevertheless, still important. I can see the uh, I can see the trick point, and uh, yes, I can see why this isn't a very popular summit. You just can't see much. The final views of Cheltenham, misty Cheltenham, admittedly, but the final views of Cheltenham are just disappearing over the edge there as I walk across this flat common to what's possibly one of the most boring summits. Is this the most boring summit in the world? I mean, if you're a 
fan of sheep? Then probably not, because there are plenty of sheep here. But otherwise it is flat and fairly nondescript. Well, there it is. Possibly the most boring summit in the world. The summit of Cleve Hill. It's not even in the middle of the field. It's just on the side. <laughs> I mean... Wow. Well, at least it's quiet. Everyone's summiting Snowdon or Ben Nevis or Scarfell Pike at the moment because they can't go abro abroad and summit Mont Blanc or whatever. Why don't they come to Cleve Hill? Well, because it's a very boring summit, but... Nice and quiet at the summit of Cleve Hill. Made it. Here I am at the most boring summit in the world. The top of Cleve Hill. I'm not even convinced it's the top. Because that bit over there kind of looks higher. In fact, I almost feel like I've just walked down a slope. Yeah, I'm not at all convinced this is the highest point of Cleve Hill. Who decided this? Anyway, not really much to do here, not really much to look at. I'll give you a quick 360 so you can see the full view. Okay, done with that so-called summit. Oh, hang on. Before I leave, I want to just check the altitude. Yep, 330 metres. So, uh, you can have that one, Ordnance Survey. Just sheep, 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 sheep. Lots and lots of sheep. That is the main feature of Cleve Common. Pretty flat and featureless other than that. Now I'm actually cutting between footpaths, which is very easy to do on Cleve Common because there's nothing but grass. Short grass as well, thanks to all these sheep. So I'm cutting across to the Winchcombe Way, which I'll then pick up and head north along Cleve Hill to the viewpoint which should give us slightly wider ranging views than the, uh, than the summit. The main footpath is a little bit too uh, busy for me so I'm taking a little side path unmarked, not public footpath but uh, dropping slightly over the other side of the hill towards uh, Winchcombe where I was last week for the Roman Villa so I thought walking down this side one, a bit quieter, fewer people and uh, two, less wind hopefully because the top of the hill is very wind swept so I'm going to just sort of track along the side of the Winchcombe Way but slightly off the peak down here and then rejoin bit further along. I don't want to drop too far down this side because then I have to recline Cleave Hill from the other side but just a little way down just enough to uh, get out of the wind. Change of plan. I've decided to sit under this tree and have a little rest. Um, my plan of getting out of the wind hasn't worked. It's still very windy here. So I'm going to have a quick sit down here but 
because uh, this wind is really cold and I'm going to get really cold if I sit here for too long. Got my first sighting of the viewpoint. Just got to negotiate around all of the uh, golfers now. A bit sort of uh, dangerous, really. This footpath going right through the middle of a golf course, but hopefully everybody is uh, suitably prepared. Right, I'm going to go straight up this uh, path here. It's pretty steep. I hadn't realised I'd lost so much altitude, but. Okay, so uh, up that path and then we should be somewhere near the viewpoint. The sun's come out, look at this. Beautiful. Nice day for a game of golf if you're into, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, never played golf myself, but maybe one day. Oh, I only put my jacket back on about. 15 minutes ago, but I think I'll probably have to remove it after I've completed this ascent. Right, final push to Cleve Hills Secondary Summit. to the viewpoint and the kind of unofficial summit of Cleve Hill and the sun's come out so double bonus. Slightly more interesting summit this one and um, there's actually a view which is nice. Uh, much busier though of course because there's a view so uh, time to head back down. Swept up here on this side of the hill. Just a windy day. Whenever I come up on Cleve Hill, it's windy. So, Cleve Hill, or the summit of Cleve Hill, the first summit, the boring summit, that's actually the highest point of the Cotswolds. There's a what it is, but I believe there's an ancient settlement just down here on the OS map. It's just called The Ring. Um, I know that there's some Neolithic settlements on here, Neolithic hill forts, so it may be related to that. It may actually be that, I'm not sure. I'm definitely not an expert on Cleve Hill history, but uh, let's cross through these sheep and try and find The Ring. Looks like they're running diesel trains on the GWSR railway today. That's the um, Gloucestershire Warwickshire Steam Railway. I was at that the race course a few weeks ago. It's hard to see from the ground, but I'm currently stood in the ring. And on the satellite view, you can see really clearly that there used to be quite a big, I think, Neolithic settlement just here and then a little smaller one just over to the side. So, uh, not much left of it now, of course, but you can definitely see where it was. Here again is a uh, smaller little settlement. So all this bit behind me would have been where 
maybe it was a food store or maybe this was just a smaller house and the bit over there was kind of the bigger gathering area but yeah would have been a really good location for them having their hill fort here because you've got perfect view over the land below so you can protect it and guard it nice view as well really We seem to be going up again. <laughs> I think my total ascent on this walk is going to be about twice as much as the actual height of Clear Vale. Well, I didn't have to ascend the full 330 metres because I was already 80 or 90 metres at sea level in Cheltenham, but still a fair amount of ascending, still a couple of hundred metres. Um, so I imagine I would have gone up at least 300 metres in height by the end of this walk. I remember many years ago coming rock climbing up this piece of rock and uh, I remember I belayed everybody up to the top that's where you're at the bottom with the rope so that if they fall if the person climbing falls then the bee there is there to catch them and because I was belaying I was watching everybody go up the wall and having watched everyone go up the wall a couple of times when it came to be my turn to go up the wall I knew the exact route to go so it's pretty quick going to be another windy video. This, uh, these woods just down here are called thrift woods and they run along the kind of base of Cleve Hill, separating Cleve Hill from sort of uh, Presbury and Southam. Southam. Looks like the sun's coming out so it might just clear up enough to see a bit of Cheltenham, which would be really nice. Well, I mean, you can see a lot of Cheltenham, but it might clear up enough so that it's clear rather than sort of a hazy Cheltenham. I was mistaken. So the ring, let me fill back there, wasn't actually the hill fort. This is the hill fort. The ring was just settlement. So yeah, this that I'm sat in now is the hill fort, which makes a lot more sense because it's got a perfect aspect looking over the kind of Cheltenham Valley bit. Uh, you've got the Cotswolds pretty much on three sides so you can look down and any attackers are going to be coming up at you so yeah it's a pretty pretty good strategic spot
walk all the way around the edge of the hill fort and uh, yeah you can see it's just perfect. I don't think I've ever been here before. Again one of those places that's so close to home that I'm just like too close to do something more interesting but this is real history. There's a hill fort that's thousands of years old that I can probably see from my house. trees behind me are called the Twins and uh, they're pretty iconic really. They over overlook Chum and Gloucester so there's not one but two benches here because such a nice view. This is the kind of best spot really for having a view of Cheltenham here at the Twins. Behind me you can see the single beach and that is apparently the highest tree on the Cotswolds at 317 metres. So it's completely isolated. This is the only tree. I mean, there's the twins here, but that beech tree is pretty much isolated. And it's surrounded by a little wall with inscriptions from people who really enjoy Cleve Hill. It's kind of a memorial thing. So this oddly square stone or cube shaped stone is called Huddlestone's Table. Now legend has it that King Canulf, King of Mercia, used this to uh, I think maybe behead some of his guests after he dedicated Winch Manny just on the other side of the hill. But I can't find much information about it other than that. It certainly looks very ancient though. Back in the foothills of Cleve Hill now. Nice to be in the shade, the sun's come out and uh, it's actually quite warm. So that concludes today's walk and it's been a good one. I wish I'd brushed up a bit more on my Cleve Hill history before I set off on this walk so I could have told you a little bit more about the uh, hill fort and the ring and the other bits on the hill there but uh, still nevertheless despite all that it was really good fun and uh, looks like the weather's turning up so let's go and enjoy the rest of Sunday in the sunshine and you enjoy the rest of your day and if you've enjoyed this video I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like and if you want to see more of my videos then please do subscribe to my channel and I'll be uploading more walking videos like this very soon but until then goodbye from me was it all just a dream just all in my head